showing you how to find molar mass and then how to use it once you found it. So one of the first things that we're going to start with, I noticed that you guys were having a little bit of difficulty knowing exactly how to round it. I, I'm not sure if it's maybe because, you know, it's been a long time since you learned how to do it, been a long time since you used it, I don't know, but we're just going to have a little refresher course on how you round. And then I'll show you how to calculate the molar mass of a couple of different compounds from uh, the worksheet that I gave you guys in class on Tuesday, and then um, what to do with that molar mass once you have it. So starting out how to round. Come on, erase, erase, there we go. Um, if you are given your masses, I mean not if, when, uh, and I tell you guys, okay, round them to two decimal places, that's about as far as you need to go to make sure that you have enough sig figs um, for your calculations, and so taking a mass and rounding it to two decimal places. So we're going to look at oxygen, we'll look at calcium, we can look at iron, and let's look at chlorine. So we're going to round these four masses to two decimal places. So oxygen on the periodic table is 15.9994. Four units on this would either be AMUs if we're talking about an individual atom of oxygen or grams per mole if we're talking about a mole of oxygen atoms. Calcium on the periodic table is 40.081 grams per mole. Iron is 55.845. And chlorine is 35.453. And we're going to round all of these guys to two decimal places. So starting with oxygen, whenever you're rounding things, you just go one, two. There's our second decimal place, and we're going to round according to this guy. Well, this nine tells me to round this nine up. So this nine becomes a zero. We carry that one over here. 1 plus 9 gives me another 10. Carry that one right here. We have 16. So 15.9994 to two decimal places is 16.00. And remember, these zeros are significant. Zeros that are at the end of a number when there is a decimal are significant. So this number right here has four sig figs. 40.081 to, fig, to two decimal places. We go 1, 2, round according to that guy. This one tells me to keep that number just as it is, so to two decimal places, calcium is 40.08. Here, we have 55.845, one decimal, two decimal place, round according to that guy. A five tells us to round this guy up, and so the four is going to become a five, and we have 55.85. Now, I know that some of you are thinking, well, okay, this 5 tells me to round this 4 up to a 5, which then tells me to round this 8 up to a 9, and no, that's not how it works. Whenever you're rounding, you look at one number for rounding and one number to be rounded. Any numbers that come in front of it are going to just stay as they are unless you have this situation right here where you just got a whole series of 9s and then each 9 is affected because the next number up is 10. Coming down here, 35.453, count one decimal place, two decimal, remember this is a decimal, not a comma, 453, and round according to the 3, so we're just going to keep it the same, 35.45. <clears throat> All right, so now calculating some molar masses. I am just simply going to write down some formula compounds, and then you can pause it, figure out your molar masses, and then hit play, and I'll show you how to work them out. So we're going to do KMNO4, the very beautiful purple potassium permanganate. We're also going to do some calcium nitrate. And let's do some copper 2 sulfate. Pentahydrate. I'll tell you what to do with this in just a second. So starting up here at KMNO4, potassium permanganate. All you have to do to figure out the molar mass of a compound is take the molar mass of each of the elements that are in here and just simply add them up. So potassium on the periodic table rounded to two sig figs, or to two decimal places, is 39.10. Add to that manganese, 
which is 54.94. Add to that, we have four oxygens here, so we actually need to take four times 16.00, or you could just write 64 if you do that in your head. And that is going to be equal to 158 uh, grams per mole. Now, I rounded that too much, but, you know, if you're close to that, you're good. Um, calcium nitrate. Calcium is going to be 40.08 plus. Now, there's a couple ways you can write this. There's one way that I like to write it, and then, you know, there's another way. It works just as well. Preference. It's totally your preference. So the way that I like to write it, I like to take this 2 and say, okay, I have 2 times my mass of nitrate, which is the NO3. So I'm going to put this in here. Nitrate is 14.08. 0, 1 plus 3 times oxygen. And oxygen is 16. Close that parenthesis, close this one, and I'll enter it into my calculator exactly like this. The other way that you could write it out, you could do the 40.08 plus 2 times 14.01 plus, since we have 2 times 3, we actually have 6 oxygen, so you just put a 6 there. Works the exact same way. And in this particular case, our answer is 164, give or take. I'm not rounding these right. <clears throat> uh, probably 164.09, if I had to guess. Uh, and then copper sulfate pentahydrate. What this is, this is saying that this particular copper 2 sulfate compound has five water molecules attached to it. Typically, these water molecules are attached to it. Uh, it improves shelf life of the chemical. Um, sometimes it just happens whenever, you know, this compound is left out, it just naturally attracts water molecules for stability because, you know, atoms are all about becoming stable. So I know you saw this little dot and you thought, oh, I'm going to multiply it by five waters. It really just means this dot just means is attached to. So five water molecules are attached to the copper 2 sulfate. So when you're finding the mass of this entire compound, you add the mass of the copper 2 sulfate plus the mass of five waters. And that looks like this. You take 63.55, which is the molar mass of copper, plus a sulfur, and sulfur is 32.07, plus our four oxygens, so 4 times 16. And then I'm going to add to that, let's see if I can scoot this down, well, I'm not going to be able to, um, five waters. Now, I've got the molar mass of water memorized just because I use it so much. But since this is an intro video, I'm just going to show you. You would take five. I'm going to have to kind of continue this down here. Five times two times the mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01, .01, plus one water, which is 16.00. Close that. This is 18.02, so five times 18.02. Add all of this up, and you end up with uh, 250, give or take, grams per mole. Again, sig figs wise, um, you know, uh, I'm honest to God, I'm pulling these answers out of a key. I didn't work them out beforehand, and I probably should have. So I'm going to do this, this guy right here on the calculator real quick and tell you what it's going to be exactly. 32.07, 64, plus 5 times 18.02. It's 249.72. And when you are adding, you know, these numbers right here, these are whole numbers. The subscripts and coefficients, those are whole numbers. So they don't contribute to your whole sig fig thing. And so, really, I just look at these numbers, and since I'm adding, and all of them have two decimals after the, or two numbers after the decimal place, then I can actually go ahead and use all of these, 249.72 grams per mole. And that's the same case up here. These really should have two uh, numbers after the decimal place to account for the fact that that would be the proper sig fig. All right, so what do you do with these numbers once you have them? rid of this. Let's say I wanted to know um, if I have 35 grams of that copper sulfate uh, pentahydrate, how many moles is that? 
Well, the way that you would set that up is just like the stoichiometry. Well, it's not quite a stoichiometry yet because we haven't involved a chemical reaction, but the process is the same. So we're going to convert this from grams to moles using the molar mass, just like we used to do when we were working with just elements. So we're going to take that 35 grams of CuSO4 pentahydrate, and we're going to convert it to moles. Whenever you have, whatever you have up here in the first little block, whatever number you were given to start with, this unit needs to go in the diagonal box. And this, since we're trying to go from grams to moles, in here is going to be our molar mass. So the molar mass of calcium sulfate pentahydrate, we just figured out, is 249.72. 249.72 grams for every one mole. Remember before, I always told you how very important your units are. So we're going to cross out grams. We are left with moles of copper sulfate pentahydrate. And you can see here, what you're going to be doing is taking 35 and dividing it by the 249.72. And you end up with 0 0.14016, blah, 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 blah. Well, according to our numbers, this number only has two sig figs, so our final answer is only allowed to have two sig figs. So you go to your first sig fig and count one, two, round according to that guy drop everything else behind it. So our final answer is 0.14 moles of copper sulfate pentahydrate. Let's do one more and then call it a day. What if we're going the other direction? I give you the number of moles and I want to know how many grams. So I say 1.70 moles of that pretty purple potassium permanganate and I want to know how many grams. What's the mass of this many moles of potassium permanganate? So again, I start with the number that I was given, the 1.70 moles of potassium permanganate, and I'm going to convert this to mass using the molar mass, except this time, since I'm starting with moles, I want to make sure that moles is down here in this box. So I'm going to put for every mole of potassium permanganate, I have a mass of 158 grams work this out my <coughs> excuse me moles of potassium permanganate cancel out I'm left with grams of potassium permanganate and you can see here I just have to multiply these two numbers and I end up with 200 69 grams of potassium permanganate. Correct sig figs, because I'm allowed one, two, three sig figs, and I have three sig figs, so yay. Um, if you have any more questions, you know where to find me.